you're new to Color Dragons and you're trying to figure out maybe what's the step process for your pairings and units that you've chosen, right? So maybe you're confused, how do I get my heroes from this position to where we see people in the future? Well, guess what? I'm making a nice step-by-step -step series here covering each of the types of units. So stay tuned for today's unit, The Archers. What's up everyone? Yes, smash a like, comment and subscribe for more daily videos of me, Mr. Sneaky, an official Call of Dragons content creator. And we are going to go over archers today because a lot of players love archers and obviously I'm in love with archers too. They're one of my favourite units in the game. Why? Because they do a wide variety of stuff. They can allow you to obviously destroy behemoths, the anti-mage which is really cool and in the later stages they even be almost the rally meta in the season 2 which we've all started to experience. But you might be wondering you know how can I go from you know a startup to you know where we need to grab. So I'm going to go over that today and we're going to work from the hero list. As you can see, I have all the heroes basically in the game, apart from obviously Theodore, but that's fine. We're going to grab him later on. But the main thing that you guys need to um, think of is when you pick archers, what do you start with? And the beautiful thing with archers and when you do pick the factions right as you guys know you will get Guan Win and Guan Win for the Spring Warden faction is phenomenal and she's one of the best heroes honestly in the epic tier especially for the abilities she actually gives you right so you're gonna get access to Guan Win we all know this Guan Win is gonna be your go-to hero at the very start and the cool thing is when you're an archer player at the start as you know with a brand new account you have the road to glory and that is an event that pops up with Craig involved and Craig will allow you basically to have a double archer parent all ready to rock with and Craig is phenomenal and one of the easiest heroes to learn and discipline yourself in skill upgrading. So that's why you're already gonna start with these two. And what do you can use these two? It's pretty simple, honestly guys, it's really simple. Don't overcomplicate it. And this is the one thing you guys I know have a big trouble with and it's the talent pages and the way the mechanics are because you've come from other games and other games have easier access to the talent trees, right? And you can change talent trees on the fly. It doesn't really hurt you as much as it does in this game. But that's why we're here today. And this is why you've got to discipline yourself at the moment. And when you discipline yourself, it's gonna obviously ride through all the way into the future, right? So Craig, when you get Craig, he's gonna be set up for your PvP marksman at the very start as an epic hero. Why? Because he's gonna be so easy for you to get the skills because of the Road to Glory event, and obviously he's a gold key commander. Really easy to upgrade. Once you've got um, your Craig basically at a nice five, five, five one or even just five five one one even in the early stages you're cooking right because the beautiful thing with craig and this is where the discipline comes in you want to actually skill craig one skill at a time so you want to max this first skill out once you've done that you will then upgrade his star to give him a um, two star then you will max out this which will give him the 10% hero skill damage bonus which is amazing and that 20% match speed when battle ends which is really good to get out so once you've done that then you go to the final one which is a nice basically 20% worth of stats it's 10% attack 10% defense right and the last one you don't really care about until the very end because it's engineering so you're not really trying to use your Craig as an engineer you're using him as that PvP guy and once you've got him in like a, as you said those three skills are sorted guess what once this is maxed out, you unlock that Awaken. And everyone knows this Awakening is brutal because the amount of damage you are dealing. This AoE damage with bleed on top. And it's crazy how much this can help in the open field. And like I say, your talents are going to be, for me, this season, I use Craig a little bit different, right? But for most players, they are most likely going to be rocking a rage build like this. And it's going to allow them basically to pump out a load of skill damage, as you can see, with all that rage. 
And with Harvest, it's a really good skill for Craig. Because Craig's dealing AoE for archers. And if you get that skill off and that AoE hits all those other mages and you've got teammates in that murder ball with you killing those mages, guess what? You're gaining Harvest stacks really easily. So that's all you need to do and then finish up with the burst shot for your Craig. From here, you will go into the mobility tree, as you can imagine, just getting this just to finish out. And for me, I would go for either Swift Moon Reviews or if you want really aggressive, preemptive preparations, right? It's up to you. It's all a little bit of utility when it comes to the mobility tree. But that shows you there, Craig's going to be a PvP guy. So go and win now. What's happened to Guan? Well, guess what? She is going to be your behemoth slayer. So what you're going to do is, again, she's your starter hero. And you're going to get this honestly maxed out really really quickly in the game and i don't want you guys to worry about it but you definitely want the first skill maxed out the same as you can imagine but you can actually unlock yes you can actually go all the way to four stars on your guanwen straight away why because you kind of want your skill points to avoid this skill here and actually land either in the amount of statching it or more importantly, the 10% damage dealt bonus. This is insane for any match, right? It's just an increased amount of stats as long as they're above 50%. And guess what? Most are above 50%. So you're going to get this steroid. And that's why Guan Wayne is going to be the behemoth slayer for you. And it allows you then with the talent page, as you can see, it's highlighted. And we will, I'm not going to go over too crazy in this because you guys can check out the Guan Wayne, you know, builds and stuff we've got on the channel. But you have this precision build, and this precision build is maxed out damage. You don't want to waste any talents like counter strike, you know, counter attack damage and defense and stuff like that when you're in the raid. Because honestly, you want to kill that thing as fast as possible and rely on your movement to dodge most of the mechanics. That's how you have to try and develop your skill to be a really good a PvE uh, Behemoth Slayer. So that kind of gives you now a frame of work, right? We've got Guan Win, we've got Craig. Where do we go from here? So obviously in Season 1, you get access to Nico and Kanara. And the thing is, you're going to unlock both pretty quickly. Kanara is on the lucky wheel, so you will be spending gems on her. But Nico is through the gold keys. So if you're lucky enough, you can uh, get your Nico. And I always advise this, and I don't, I, honestly, if you really, really want to try and get this guy out, you can kind of use him at 4 0, just, just have him not skilled up. But you would put the Nico behind the Craig. Because Nico is just there to deal that nice 1200 skill damage and 12% until you max him, right? So as soon as you get a 5 on this first skill, you're going to start using Nico a lot more in this game. Because then you will honestly do the same as Guan Win. You will push him straight away to the 4 stars and you will start pumping your you know, sculptures into him to try and put all of your skills into these two slots. Because these are the two slots that you actually care about in PvP and in PvE content, right? Which is very important on this hero. So what you want to do then is when you get your Nico at least 5111, you've got options. You can still run Guanwin as the primary hero, but then rock your Nico behind why because it's going to do a ton of damage together when they are hitting behemoths right but then you can actually change your nico's talent tree right because nico has a marksman precision tree and if you remember craig has marksman mobility so this is kind of an upgrade already for our march so what we can do is instead go for a build like this and you can see it's almost the same and you can change it up to you if you want the counter attack damage or do you want harvest cost of the Craig. It's up to you. I'm going to leave that your choice and it becomes a preference where you kind of like you know, the aggressiveness of harvest or do you actually like the, the defensiveness of a turtle kind of ability where people are always hitting you and you've got a ton of counter attack damage which you will be getting again here on this build so it's a really powerful um tool that you could get for nico and that'll allow you then to have a nico primary or a craig primary with two different talent builds 
for PvP, and all you gotta do is switch that match about. And don't get me wrong, you can run a Nico Guan Win in PvP. Just make sure the Nico, like I say, is the primary hero cost of the talent page. And then you could even Nico and um Nico Craig, right? Or if you wanted to. Craig and Nico. It's up, um, Craig and Guan Win, shall we say, still. It might be just because you haven't got a good Nico, and that's fine. You guys need to accept that. Sometimes you just got to wait a little bit, you know, in line, and then go crazy, right? So then we still haven't talked about Kanara, and Kanara, honestly, is in the same boat, right? But the thing with Kanara is she will open so many doors for you. And honestly, for me, as an archer player, I would always recommend unlocking this hero. She almost feels like in Rise of Kingdoms style, like the Saladin of the game, where she's almost just like that too good of a hero um, in the early game that you just will most likely use this in the longest time until maybe five years in the, in the future where there's just obviously a power creep compared to him, right? But what you get for Kanari as an archer is an insanely good PvP hero. And that's what you will only be using this hero for as a archer player mainly. Because she deals a ton of damage here um, for your match. And as a 5 one one hero, as I've got her... She does so much work for me, right? I can go into here, we can look. She has 2.5 million kills, man. Like, she is easy rocking um, kills with just a basic setup. And this is why I want you to get this hero, especially if you're wanting to think of an archer upgrade. Because with only if you're going for one archer, this is the one. Because you have maximum PvP and control. And honestly, PvP and control are two of the best trees in the entire game. They just give you just so much versatility and the ability to just synergize with so much in the game, right? So if you're looking at the control tree, you have so good rage generation, like you can see with Soul Siphon held, held high. You can even do stuff like a defense break build with ambush, right? You can do all these crazy stuff, um, even silencing the enemy from casting rage skills with this style of tree. And then you've got the PvP side, which does just raw damage del increase more damage del increase like pure hp stats like it's just so good as a tree for you right it just it inherits what pvp is trying to give you the stats that you care about like um you know the hit health even the smaller amounts of healing that you get after you kill units is just a nice little buffer so you just have everything here and obviously we know marksman is a great tree so you have the ability to mix three fantastic talent trees on this hero and when you're building her you can't really build her wrong because she's like craig i would honestly go five one 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 and then once you've got that like i am doing i am saving all of my sculptures as you can see and i'm going into a five five one one hero and the reason why is because when you get this you get a nice 20 percent damage in normal attack which is all the damage you care about but you even get the 10% hero skill damage taken, which is key because you are going to be taking so much hero skill damage when you're targeted as an archer player and reducing that honestly gives you survivability, right? So once we've got this, I am going to try and get this maxed out. So she's triple five and then one because this is something that happens during combat while all of these are actual stats that I can always use anywhere basically because they're constant passively on, right? So I really do like that build and that's why you should be going for Kanara, right? But now we're in the future and you've got Kanara and you're looking now back at those heroes that we've been talking about. What would you do? So you can do a few things. I'm just going to say, you can run, if you want to run a double archer match, you could run like Kanara with Craig, and then even with your Nico, have Guan Wen. And that would be perfectly fine. You've got two archers that are just trying to kill someone together really, really fast with the normal attack damage. But if you really want to do something spicy, I would rather you actually go into just a pure Kanara and Nico build. It's just so good when it works together because you're defense breaking them, you're dealing a ton of damage, you're looking at the Kanara, she's reducing the damage dealt as well with all the tanking she has. It's just a match made in heaven, guys. It's just a match made in heaven. So you're definitely going to be running Kanara no matter what. 
But then you get into the next season and you might be thinking, how do I go from this? Because we know that now we've got Frega and we've got Sindrion, right? So we've got the two newer archers in the game and you're probably wondering, what do we do now? So as you can see, this is what my current roster looks like. And, and as you can sadly see, Guan Win has fallen out of my favor. And the reason why Guan Win falls out of my favor is because Frega is just basically that champion, but better. She's just way better in every category. Like she does 700 skill, uh, um, 600 skill damage, which is good. Um, a nice little punch, not massive. But it's the crit rate. She has a massive 60% crit rate for 7 seconds. And that amount of damage is unmatched. You can go from 2,000 to nearly 4.2 thousand and higher. Depending on your talent trees and the combos you run with this hero. And as you can see, you get normal attack damage bonus. You get the crit. And more importantly... You even get this absolute amazing utility skill for PvP. So it's actually one of those heroes that you're going to get. And you are going to most likely level up, I think, over time. I'm going to... I've been sitting on her because I'm working on Frega um, on my Kanara more now. And then I'm going to come back to Frega to try and get this skill uh, maxed out. So she's 5-5-5-2. Five, 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 and then, you know, we'll finally get her done. But then we get Syndrion, and this is where things are going to get a little bit difficult for players. Because Syndrion is, I'm not going to lie, a must pick as well. You have to get this hero. This hero, for some reason, is just unfair in damage. And he, with Frega, just gives you the options and the flexibility. Even at 5-1-1-1, as you can see here. And I've only just got him this season. And if we were going to look at his kills, he's got over 2 million kills already, right? This just shows how good this hero honestly is, even for a T4 player, right? And the way you can get him, as you guys know, is like the Wheel of, um, not the Wheel of Fortune, the new, the other one that came out where um, it's at the start of the season. You might get lucky and get him there um, in the season, but... You will have opportunities through Strongest Lord or Daily Deals, right, at the moment. That's the only way you're going to be able to get him. But once you've unlocked him, you're good. Because once you've unlocked him, you can use all your generational two tokens, start working on him. And the reason why is this guy literally also just replaces Guan Win. And, and, and it's sad to see that, that two legendary heroes are very similar on what they want to do, like Guan Win where it's very high single target damage that amplifies with like just raw damage output because of like the 10% damage dealt bonus. And Syndrion does this very well because of the rapid fire. You get rapid fire through your first skill and you get it at the start of combat because of the fourth skill. And because of that, you always generally beat your opponent to the punch, which is your rage skill, meaning you always get there first and you beat them first. And it's devastating when you see it in action. And because you get these two heroes, the funny thing is Craig actually doesn't lose here because what you can actually do is very um, intuitively but you can imagine, like when you're in season two and you've got access to these heroes, the one hero I haven't mentioned yet is the fear. And this is what you would most likely do as an archer player. So what I would do is have the Nico and Frega together, which is a very fine match. And then you can have Kanara and Syndrion. It's a very powerful match on the open field. And then it allows you to have Fear and Craig. And that actually gives you three archer matches, very powerful, all work together. And honestly, two of them you can use for whatever purposes you want. And then you've got the Craig match, which is more of a flanker farm killer, which is really cool too. So you're actually opening new ways to play the game for yourself. But the one match we haven't mentioned, as you can imagine, was Syndrome and Frega putting up together. And this honestly does do the most amount of single target DPS in the entire game, right? Which means in behemoths, bring it. And we've seen players that were rocking Awakened, T5 Awakened, like Nico Canaras going against just a 5, literally a 5-1-1-5-ish, 
or like five, say five one three five Syndrome, right? With a with a five 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 one Fregar against Double Awaken on Nico Canara, or uh, um, you know swapping it around, and they don't even come close. It doesn't even come close, guys. Like the amount of damage this pumps out is just unreal, and. And, and it's one of them things where I say, like, once you get access to these heroes now, it hopefully opens your eyes now on the possibilities of what you can do, right? Because you've got to think, when, when you are looking at this, you are going to slowly progress up this ladder. And this is the current ladder of, like, how archers are at the moment. Until maybe they introduce more, and maybe when they introduce more, you could potentially skip on the Fregar. Or you could skip on the Syndrome, for example, right? And then maybe in the later Archer Heroes, those are the ones that you're going to get over one of these ones. So it's it's, it's it's a bit of a, you know, weird nuance at the moment. Because the game, you got to remember, is in the early stages. But I hope so far with the video, that has given you guys a little bit of advice with marches, with what you should be doing with your Archers, pairing them up, working on them over time, and how you can develop all these different archer pairings that work in different ways for your account, right? So the one thing I haven't mentioned and is a little bit more for the spenders now is I'm gonna mention one special addition at the end and it's Hosk, right? Hosk, a lot of people dislike and I know a lot of people dislike him and it is true, he's not um, one of those greatest heroes. However, there is a current really powerful build that you can run even in season one with Hosk if you're a spender. And that is obviously when you've got this hero awakened, which requires you to obviously get the counter attack crit rate. And that is one of the keys with the damage dealt bonus here and all the stats you are gaining. Because the combo is Hosk and Kanara for PvP. This, this match is scary, dude. Because Kanara is already super tanky, and then you've got a Hoss that is actually providing all of the damage she wants and the counter attack damage amplification on this 30% here is kind of scary good, especially when mage players are hitting this match. Mages hate it. They absolutely get shredded. And especially with the talent page that allows you to have maximum amount of counter attack damage with the PvP and the control tree. So it's honestly a really powerful build. I just wanted to mention for you guys, right? So that is all the Archer info that you're gonna to need to know when it comes to your 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 heroes, right? And you're probably wondering, is that gonna be it? And it isn't, guys. I'm not. I'm gonna leave you hanging. It's gonna be a little bit of a long video, as you can see down below. And I hope you've enjoyed it so far. If you've made it through, guess what? Smash like, comment, and subscribe, right? But we've got artifacts, and this is the one thing I think a lot of players do struggle with artifacts because it's like what artifact should we go for what should we push for right honestly this is my advice this is for the free to play players first and then we're going to go more in the spender rooks it's a little bit different free to play players honestly what you should be doing is obviously getting as many gold universal gold keys get those artifacts opens right and see what you get that's one of the ways you're going to have to work with it but Another thing you can do, and I will recommend it for free to play players, is save up gems. Because if you really want to get an artifact, potentially, in a season, if you wait and get that 30,000 gems at the end of the season, and you get the Ionited, you know, compendium, you can get guaranteed two legendary artifacts. And you could try and get either something like the Shadow Blades here, maybe Heart of Kamaset, you know, depending on what it is, maybe Biola's Bow, potentially, who knows, right? Because um, it's all different depending on, you know, your, your end of season, right? So you can roll for that, but what you would do is pretty simple. I wouldn't use Rapid Crossbow. This is just just ignore this guys it's it's cool it's a thousand damage it's cool right but what you're going to be using and you can see here i've got it four starred because i'm not a liar you're going to want to use bomb flinger in the early game honestly level up bomb flinger don't hate me for it you're going to enjoy this cost why this thing has a one minute 30 cooldown with no rage cost which is important because after one minute 30 in the, in the raid you fire this and this is dealing 2400 damage. 
and this obviously scales with your your, your, your heroes, your legions, so you do so much damage compared to other players because when you compare it even just to a Shadow Blades, and the Shadow Blades, when you look at the skills here, increment up, and I'm at 3,000, but I need a level 3 Shadow Blades to actually deal more damage to the Behemoth. So even if you've got a 1 or 2, just don't bring this. Use your Shadow Blades specifically for PvP until you get it to a level 3 stage, and then you can bring it because it will be unfortunately that that bomb flinger but until then rock bomb flinger in four pve raids only right but then you've got obviously the heart piercer you could use this i'm not gonna lie um for quite a while i did but i got really really lucky and got shadow blades early so as soon as you honestly get shadow blades i would just use this in pvp with your arch match all the time then, as a spender now, this is where the, the artifacts are going to change a little bit because you can get access to Shadow Blades a lot sooner, right? You have the Insight Rune, as you guys know, that is, you know, at the end of the season or during the season, you know, you're going to complete these challenges. We've got 13 days left. And by going up to rank 80 here, you're going to get a potential reward with some extra, you know, sculptures, right? Which is really cool. And you can see... I'm just trying to get to 60 here because it's just so many sculptures to get compared to just honestly, I'm not really bothered about Dragon Rift, I'm not going to lie, but some of these have Shadow Blades in and this is a really easy way to get Shadow Blades and level it up. So that's so one way to get that as an investment and then I'm just going to say Forge of Light, I would only recommend this to high spenders, yes. Um, the reason why is this is insane, you have on average, I have to spend nearly 50,000 to 75,000 gems to roll this event to try and get the artifact I want. However, however, I'm not a Mr. Sneaky for no reason. I'm not here just to give you some basic understanding on how to get some, you know, crazy artifacts. You can see I've got 15 of these keys. And the way I've been doing it is pretty simple. You do honestly need to go and scrap. And I am very, very, as you can see, and I need to do it today, but I'm very, like, bang on on what relic amounts I need. And by doing that, I keep generating about a thousand of these coins. And by generating a thousand of these coins a week, guess what? I can buy these forged artifact keys. And it is easy, guys, because all you've got to do is honestly, and it sounds crazy, open up your daily keys and go for those dark chests. That's all I am doing. And as you can see, I just keep like five or, you know, or below of these. Here I'm doing the same or on four though. And then on this bit I've got, I normally dr drop it down to 50. But you can see I've already got a thousand and I'm ready for next, um, the next week. And that allows me to save up these keys and instead of spending a ton of gems to try and get this. Guess what? I'm going to stack up and try and get to 40, 50 keys and roll 50 times. And it's a really good way to wait for an artifact. And when you're waiting for an artifact, this is a good way to invest it into, right? Unless you're a super high spender, go nuts. I'm just going to say you can go nuts into the Forge of Light. But the only Forge of Light events I would only recommend doing are the ones that you need for your archer march right so you've got gold crest and viola's bow and both of these honestly are just so insane in pvp for different reasons because they both have damage and utility and that is what's key for an archer player when they're looking for pvp based um, ar um you know archer artifacts shadow blades is amazing i'm not gonna deny it but it just deals a ton of aoe damage which is fine and it's it's cool but I can still deal a ton of AoE damage, but stop you now from casting your artifact for 10 seconds. Or I can even deal an insane amount of single target burst here um, on you. And if I do, it has an additional trigger that can just immobilize you if I have a Fragar in that march, which is very popular because you can run Nico Fragar Gold Crest. Guess what? It's going to stun. So it's a very cool little concept you can do there for all these artifacts and loads of times you would invest if you're more of a spender in these right 
but with artifacts just work with what you've got right so that's pretty much it that hopefully should give you the progression if you're wondering about units honestly i would just play spring wardens you have everything you're going to need in spring wardens four archers because you get the march speed you're getting healing too and you're getting guan win plus you even get an archer range which gives you the ability when you're in combat to increase your physical attack that's just how these guys work as their just their skill as you know uh, um in their ability which is fine um you just gotta remember each one has their own ballistas are also a really good one and i'm not gonna lie wilderbergs are also a good one but it's just their civilization I don't feel it isn't just as good as spring wardens that's the only reason right but if you want to run any of the factions run any of the factions you can enjoy the game just as much as anyone else right but that's it. That is the Archer video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you've learned and maybe you've got a bit more of a head on your you know, shoulders now and you understand that it's going to be a progress. You know, you've got to progress and you've got to start from somewhere. Everyone does it. And then once you get to a certain milestone, it's, it's go time and you feel good because you've reached it. And now you push into the next one, right? And that's what this game's all about. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have and you've learned something today about archers and the artifacts and just, the, you know, pushing of the, you know, different types of pairings throughout the seasons and how you could be, you know, working on your account, smash the like, comment and subscribe. And, you know, by doing that, you will be supporting the channel by just doing all those freebies and obviously get notified when the new videos do come out which is amazing and we do live streams so if you want to check out the live streams just come and join right so with all that we've done archers and do you know what i'm going to go straight into the next video after this just as you guys for a little teaser and that is going to be the mage heroes because obviously they're the most popular units in the game so with all that stay safe guys stay sneaky and enjoy the rest of your day